more supply of corn and soybeans confirmed by the USDA and the other market developments. Right here on Connected Farmer, your channel to keep you up to date with the latest trends in agriculture and livestock. So, Jerry, uh, the report confirmed the higher yields for both corn and soybeans with more supply of both crops. So, how, how did you see the report? Well, uh, the report definitely gave some very optimistic uh, yields, uh, really across the whole Midwest. Uh, uh, they were really close or actually uh, record levels here on, uh, particularly in corn. We had a uh, USDA 100, 200, excuse me, 226 bushel projection uh, for Illinois. That's up from two years ago, it's 214. In most cases, we've even been below two. The 210 level most of the time. So very optimistic. Now, we, you and I both saw some pretty good corn out there, but uh, our <coughs> and our consistency was a lot better than it has been in some years and that. But our average for the our little mini tour there in the central part of the state uh, was up about three and a half, four bushels, uh, jumping uh, as high as they did. Makes it quite interesting because uh, uh, the southern third of the state definitely has uh, some difficulties. The soil quality is just not there to have the best yields. And uh, they must have some pretty optimistic yields down that direction. Uh, Iowa also was a record. I think they were looking at 209 there, uh, 206 or 7 in Indiana. Some very impressive yield estimates in that. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, to some extent, uh, uh, with the lo somewhat lo limited, I should say, uh, heat situations here uh, across the Midwest this uh, month of August, uh, I think people are not anticipating much of a tip back. I think that's interesting uh, from the standpoint that even some of the years that we saw had some uh, tip back, and uh, interestingly enough, uh, uh, I think some of them even got worse as we were, uh, you know, going along here in the state. Uh, similar situation on soybeans there, 53.2 nationwide, uh, 66 bushel in Illinois yield. That's, I think, two bushels above the previous record of 64. Uh, Iowa had a, a strong yield of 61. Uh, I think 62 was Indiana. Uh, and that Eastern Corn Belt definitely is an interesting world uh, because of uh, uh, maybe not as much heat as happens out there in uh, the plain states. And, and also uh, uh, it, the, the one twist of it is, is that I, some of Ohio's moisture situations have not been as strong uh, as they've been Eastern Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, uh, Wisconsin, Michigan. Stuff like that. So that's going to be interesting scenarios. They go through more uh, crop tours going forward uh, from there. The uh, extra bushels the, uh, that uh, the, the trade is looking for like a 182. We got a 183 on corn. They're looking at 52. Uh, we got 53 on, uh, on uh, the soybeans nationwide. You know, pretty optimistic numbers. Uh but we'll, uh, I think that's going to be a, a, a factor here, of course, as we go into the next weekend, the Pro Farmer Crop Tour uh, from there, uh, from the standpoint that uh, they do make a pretty extensive uh, look at the Midwest uh, crop prospects from eastern Nebraska, eastern South Dakota, through uh, Iowa, Minnesota, and then coming from the east, they come through Ohio. Indiana, Illinois, Eastern Iowa, uh, and that. So, yeah, th that will be the focus of the trade this coming week. Um, from there, after we had uh, pretty uh, lackluster defensive tones most of this week. Yes, and so on Friday, both crops uh, have uh, the price down. Uh, so, as expected by by the. Yeah, yeah, but basically, uh, 
uh, with the weekend uh, weather being benign. And there was, well, interestingly enough, there's some good rains in parts of uh, the western Corn Belt, uh, eastern uh, eastern Nebraska and western Iowa in that, and then the rain potential. And then I think there's also just a uh, uh, decided a decision to be on the on the sidelines if you're uh, long or. Uh, and I'm not sure there's a lot of extra selling going on, but there was definitely nobody interested in being uh, ahead of the weekend in the Pro Farmer Crop Tour next year, ne this coming week. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So I think that was a factor that put things in a defensive a little bit uh, from there. Uh, from the standpoint of uh, worldwide news, actually, we've had some pretty positive type of uh, 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 com uh, updates here from various people in the wheat market. We've had some interest. Now, there was kind of a twist here earlier in the week. Uh, the, the weekend before, uh, this time a week ago, there was a, uh, ideas that the uh, Egyptians and the, were going to end up selling out over 3.8 million metric tons of their wheat in one fell swoop between now and all the way to April of next year. They asked for bids in that whole scenario. Problem was is that a lot of people were very cautious about uh, putting out bids and put really high bids in there from January through April next year. And so uh, the cost of the, the uh, idea that the Egyptians were going to be able to uh, by all at one time, kind of fizzled because of that. Then they decided they were going to do a 1.8 million metric ton one from the, between now and first of the year. And uh, they're dealing directly with the Russians on this one, supposedly trying to get that worked out. Uh, but there's other people being in. Algeria was in for some wheat, so was uh, uh, some others. Actually, uh, Algeria actually bought some Durham, which is a very unusual. It's the pasta wheat of the world uh, from there. So uh, the uh, there was a demand out there for wheat, and wheat kind of stumbled along sideways while corn and soybeans kind of slipped lower on on the world uh, stage here on prices. Uh, I, it's going to be uh, uh, I don't know how quickly they'll be reacting to the various numbers from the tray uh, from the. Uh, tours that they come together on the evening of these tours and uh the, in this case uh they'll be in the uh, uh lincoln nebraska uh, after being through south dakota and parts of north northern north uh, northern nebraska northeast nebraska i should say and, and that and then they'll be uh uh be in, in a town just north of indianapolis uh, on uh, Monday night. So those will be the times that we'll get most of these uh, uh, Pacific information up about what's going on in the tours at, at this point. But there's uh, also an opportunity uh, to watch the tour uh, on the internet. It's called hashtag PF tour 24. And so if uh, people like to check at that out, they can uh, along the way. Uh, and that it's unfiltered, just whatever the particular uh, crop scouts are seeing in the fields and that uh, as they go along from both the eastern and western parts of the Corn Belt. Do you expect the the, the tour to bring anything new? Uh, I, I kind of feel like that maybe it will calm down some of this idea that we're on to even higher price, higher production. Do I think it's going to end up, uh, oh... All of a sudden, uh, bring us a uh, huge rally in the markets. Probably not either. But at the same time, I think it could uh, stabilize some of the ideas that uh, even the 183 bushel U.S. yield is going to end up being higher later in the season. Uh, and that, uh, because I think the one thing that we noticed uh, when we were out there in central Illinois, that the crop maturity of the crop uh, – was definitely a lot more uh, widespread between, you know, uh, stuff in uh, heavy dent even to uh, to stuff that just uh, had pollinated and that out there. So uh, it won't be as dramatic as that as when we were there earlier in the month. But at the same time, there's going to be, uh, I think, maybe a little less uh, uh, at this point uh, 
uh, we'll have to be looking at uh, other things to uh, add to the negatism. I'm not sure the crop size is going to be as big as or get, big and getting bigger uh, is has really been the mindset here over the last couple three weeks. All right. So the next week uh, will be a full market week. Uh, what else uh, are you going to watch? Oh, of course, uh, uh, the uh, crop tour scenario. And also, uh, I think the interesting twist is uh, South America is still back in the background here. Uh, it, it, as the issues in that, interestingly enough, uh, in Argentina, uh, because of low prices and some of the issues they've had with leafhopper uh, down there, grasshopper as we know it, and that this has some issues in their uh, Argentine crop. There's been reports that they might not plant uh, two million metric ton, uh, two million hectares, I should say, uh, of their crop for the coming year. Uh, that would be quite interesting if that continues, and uh, and also just the. Uh, uh, ongoing uh, approach that we've had here uh, with the uh, on the weather scene is, is uh, La Nina uh, picking up any steam, things of that nature. I think those are going to be some big subject matters here as we go uh, towards the middle latter part of August uh, and that because uh, South America's impact is, is impacted usually pretty significantly by a uh, Swing towards the La, La Nina situation. It uh, got, definitely dinged up uh, Argentina over the last day, two or three years, uh, and that not so much as last year because we were coming off of that, going towards an El Nino. But uh, from there, so and the same thing on Brazil. Another feature that South America is a huge competitor uh, in the world suppliers uh, versus the U.S., and so their outputs will be quite important. Uh, and that in the trade, we'll be watching them closely as we go through uh, the rest of August and September. Usually in, uh, in Brazil starts to start planting uh, some of their uh, beans, actually, uh, in uh, mid to late August. Actually, mid to late September, I'm sorry, uh, from there. So that's the that'll be some of the features the, the markets are looking at going forward. The one thing that's kind of interesting right now is, is that uh, we're down at some historically uh, low levels. So uh, to some extent, uh, there's not as many people <laughs> going to be beating it up when you're down below $4 in corn and down below $10 in beans. Uh, those are very, uh, I think this has been since 2020, uh, that we've been these lows in prices. So uh, the downside uh, situation is relatively modest here, even uh, if we uh, all of a sudden find a huge amount of corn in the U.S. All right. Thank you very much. You bet. Well,